After weeks of protests in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, led by students calling for greater democracy and less corruption, China's Politburo made its move to break up the demonstrations as the 3rd of June 1989 gave way to the 4th, the troops moved in. What happened next was a bloodbath. Hundreds of civilians died, possibly thousands. Open debate of the topic is forbidden on the Chinese mainland, but in Hong Kong, an estimated 100,000 people gathered to hold a candlelight vigil marking the 20th anniversary of the clampdown. The BBC's Kate Aidy was on the streets of Beijing during the protests and witnessed the killings at close quarters. Twenty years on, she's returned to China to make a documentary about the confrontations. I'll be speaking to her in a moment, but first let's take a look at a clip from her programme. And then, as troop lorries were seen moving down the road, there was gunfire from those lorries. A huge volley of shots just as I left the front line caused panic. The young man in front of me fell dead. I fell over him. Two others were killed yards away. Two more people lay wounded on the ground near me. I, I felt a huge conviction that we should stay on the streets for as long as possible. And I went way beyond the boundaries which I would normally set about how dangerous it was getting. I went way beyond that. I decided to stay and get the pictures. A lot of things going on. Soldiers, APCs, students running, people shot, bicycles taking people away, injured people. It was mayhem. And Kate joins us now here in the studio. So Kate, just describe for us a little bit more what it was like being there 20 years ago. It was hugely violent. Um, it was a well-armed army coming in, trucks with soldiers firing randomly down every street as they came in, followed by APCs, followed by tanks. It was an assault. And all the people that uh, were there in the center of the city and in those surrounding streets were completely unarmed and absolutely stunned with disbelief. That's the most important thing I remember of the first half hour of it. I too was amazed. I could not understand coming down one of these narrow streets towards this big broad highway down which these trucks were thundering that there were people stood either side of me, this is just after midnight on a warm night, and they just walked out of their houses. Some of them had been in bed thinking, what's the noise? And as I stood there, I turned to one of them, he wasn't there, he was dead on the ground. And the disbelief was that they were firing at anyone. And this went on right on, right till the moment when the fi they finally gained control of the square five hours later. And you still had students standing there saying, they, they can't be firing. It must be verbal bullets. The army loves the people. That is decades of propaganda ran down their throats that an army would never do this to their own people. And they did. And the politicians had ordered it. Very difficult to work out what was actually going on inside the square itself, or did you get an idea? Because a lot of the killings that were witnessed by journalists such as yourself were in the surrounding streets. They were indeed, and in fact we'd all assumed, or anyone might assume, that the great focus would be the square, and that would be um, where a battle took place. In fact, it's been very well described afterwards as the square was where the political struggle took place, where the tanks came in, that was the might of the authorities saying, right, back out of our square, you may not be here. We are taking control. And there were some killings in the square. And I witnessed shooting at about 4.15 in the morning. Volleys of shots which were aimed at people directly, not over in their the heads. In the square? In the square. Because um, we don't know how many, really. Could I mean, we say pos hundreds, possibly thousands, because we don't we know the don't extent. Know. Probably the nearest um, accurate estimate may have been made only a few hours or 24 hours after the killings started. And that was the Chinese Red Cross, mm -hmm. who put out a statement saying they knew of a thousand uh, dead from medical sources in Beijing hospitals the, and possibly more as high as 3,000 that statement vanished within hours and has never been found again on any source. The government heard its own people putting out this and then said, no, absolutely not true. We would reckon at least a thousand dead because I could hear gunfire at certain points that night all over the city. 
And it's important to point out, isn't it, Kate, that um, the protests really had the students who led the protests and very much wanting more rights, very peaceful. But there were some ordinary Chinese workers, and some of them did turn on some of the Chinese soldiers or some There was some fighting, definitely. That. There were some bloody confrontations at a lot of the crossroads. We saw the results of that. 3, 4 a.m., we were up near areas called Fushing Men, where there were heaps of bodies, and there were buses on fire, and there were vehicles, APCs ablaze. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea what had happened to the soldiers. But it was the very fact that workers had joined the students mm -hmm. that finally tipped the politicians and made them into, into real fear. fear. But now, Kate, I mean, you've been back in like this, but the authorities just simply want to keep a lid on what's actually happened. I mean, it's so difficult, but people need to know. They do need to know, and I think any, any state needs to be able and should justify what it does, and they have never acknowledged it. And the people we met, dissidents, people who were injured, people who lost sons and daughters, are all campaigning, not just, um, uh, for the, as it were, for themselves, but for the fact that they think that the country should admit what it did. Some of them would like compensation. They haven't been able to work. They are hounded and harassed by the authorities against the background of an absolutely economically glitzy, booming country. There's still a need to very, acknowledge. Very briefly, Kate, do you think they died in vain, all those deaths? No, I don't. I think they didn't uh, die in vain. I think they didn't achieve what they wanted, but they pointed out what a regime can do and what needs to be done. Kate Ailey, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Now, there are reports that two Americans...